Welcome to The Growing Band Director, the podcast that dives into topics applying to all of us band directors. My name is Kyle Smith, and joining me is my friend and colleague, Jeff Smith. Together, we discuss many aspects of the school band program, including how to build your concert, jazz, and marching programs, as well as everything else we do as band directors. More importantly, we'll discuss concepts that help us all improve our own programs every day. Always remember the famous quote by Ray Kroc, when you're green, you're growing, and when you're ripe, you rot. Let's get started. So the band director's first job is recruitment. Hey, Jeff, sell me on it. That's, well, that's the way I feel about it. Um, you know, we we talk in, in methods classes about how to do this with the music, how to do that with the music, how to teach that. But if you don't have clients to teach, it doesn't matter what you've learned to do with the music. You have to have clients. Yeah. And I think that as music teachers, we have to put in the foreground that we must first recruit students to be in our programs and we must recruit them all the time. So if I break it down into three groups, like the elementary, elementary is probably the hardest group to recruit for. And I have the least amount of experience in. So yeah. I'm just going to give you my overview and please jump in if you if you disagree with a better idea. Yeah. Um, an evening test grade, test drive in May for third through fifth graders every year where the kids get to see all the instruments, get to hear all the instruments played by high school or middle school kids. And then they get to try a few of them. So as long as we have the proper sanitation tools to do it. And now with COVID, that's going to make it a little bit more difficult. So we have to think about that a little bit more, but it allows open enrollment every year for th- grades three, four, and five. And it makes it a little bit more difficult for the music teacher, but it builds a program and it enjoins more of the community in the elementary school. Yeah. So, and then, yeah. So, when you talk about three, four, five, when does that mean band starting in fourth grade or band starting? Band in would grade? start in fourth grade. Lessons would start in third grade for some instruments. Fourth grade's the same instruments plus more as the child bill gets bigger in size. I, I remember we had one kid one year. All she wanted to do was play tuba, but she was too tiny to play tuba. So we started her on euphonium. And as soon as she was big enough to play a half size tuba, she was on tuba and she stayed on tuba all through high school, through college and as a middle school band director. So a really big deal is we're talking about this as a high school teacher or a middle school teacher. We're thinking about the elementary school. And I think, you know, it's really crucial that we think of this K to 12 program it's not just who do i have coming in we have to try to build some sort of program where the kids are going to gain skills in elementary school to be able to then start in band to be able to then go to middle school band and then go to high school band i agree 100 percent. i think the biggest problem with many dis not many some districts is that there isn't a team effort where it's not the high school band director and then the middle school and elementary school band director. It's all three levels of band directors. And in my former community, there were uh, two, four, four middle schools, uh, pardon me. Yeah. Four middle schools, two high schools and 13 elementary schools. So it meant is all working together for a common goal and a common method of teaching. And I was just last night at a concert and talking to one of my colleagues who's an elementary school band director, and they just got a new high school band director coming into the district. And the high school band director started dictating to the elementary school band director and the middle school band director what lesson books they need to use. Well, that's not fair. No. The elementary school band director knows their kids and what's good for them. The middle school band director knows what's good for their kids. And the high school band director knows what's good for their kids. And there needs to be a common bond where they sit and discuss what is best for the kids of that community? Yeah, and I think that's important. Like, if you're a new in a new place and say you come in and you don't think what they're using is appropriate, right? That's a conversation you can have. You can ask about it. You can learn about it. You maybe even can, can suggest. But you're right to come in and say, we need to use something different. I think that's, that's a hard sell. You know, one of the struggles I've always had is when you're so busy, soup to nuts, beginning to the end of your day, every single day, making time to get to the other schools, right? That's always a struggle and everybody has to have their own way to do that. Um, but, but it's so, so important 
to just have your face seen and to and and you know to really work with those teachers um, to do it well. Yeah, I agree, and I think the biggest thing there has to be mutual respect between directors, music teachers of all levels, so they work together. I started teaching back in the '70s, and we had a department meeting once a week where all 52 music teachers got together with our supervisor and we talked about music for three hours once a week and it made us a very cohesive body as far as music teachers but we also became a cohesive body as friends and we'd go to one another's concerts all the time and they'd see our faces all the time like you said and the parents would see our faces so the other things that i'd recommend is like a friend's concert where the elementary band members invite a friend to come to an evening concert of the elementary school band. And on one song, their friend comes up and sits next to them while they're playing the concert. So they, or a rehearsal to see what they're doing and how they interact with the teacher and their friends. Yeah. And then a town-wide band festival, elementary school band, middle school band and high school band, all performing in one concert, a few tunes. So parents can see how everything works together. And then the band director needs to visit the elementary school band director department needs to visit the kindergarten music classrooms, the first grade, second grade, and third grade, so that the kids see the teacher all the time and say, I want to be part of her group or his group. I want to do that as well as do your class. And at the same time, they should have some discussion with those K to two to three to first grade um, teachers about what they're doing in their class. To Because if you can get them on board with doing curriculum that prepares them for band, that's really big. You know, in Westbrook, we use First Steps in Music by John Feyerabend, and that is all about making kids, kids tuneful, beatful, and artful. The kids are singing and dancing, reading music. They're not learning about history. Any history they learn is through songs. And then, you know, we found a lot of success through that. Um, and then we have another program we use to bridge that gap to go into beginning band. And and when you're ready, I'll, I'll talk about that. But that, you know, people forget about the K to two. And so many times there's these teachers who just like teach about Beethoven or teach whatever lessons they've taught forever. And, you know, if kids are in their music class, making music and learning how to be tuneful, beatful and artful, it will prepare them to be good musicians in the program. Agreed. John's program is fantastic. It leads for a better human being, a better musician. I think elementary band directors also have to do something else. And sometimes they forget this part of their job. They need to, when the kid gets to the end of fifth grade, to reassure the kid, encourage the kid vigorously to go on and play in the middle school program. Sometimes, whether it be an elementary band director, a middle school band director, or even a high school band director, when their time is done, they don't, it's, it's not their problem anymore. But it is because if we're going to be a lifelong team, we have to be working together all the time to yeah. get and further it. So like with the middle school, band director i say the same thing yes please so um before we get into the middle school i just i wanted to kind of give a, a plug as to what has really worked well for us and i'll say my wife has done most of this work um because she has the kids five through eight in the middle school so her work happens in the fourth grade um beforehand but the two things that we use that have been enormous for us is one instrument placement and what that means is she spends three minutes with every single kid in the fourth grade pulled from their music class and they will have that three minutes to try a flute head joint a trombone mouthpiece and a trumpet mouthpiece to see if with quick instructions they can easily get a buzz from either one of those or make a good flood flute head joint sound so she'll mark that down and she can have an idea about what the kids can naturally do. And then at the same time, the music teachers do this really fun exercise called the IMMA testing, which sounds not as fun, but it's really useful. And that stands for Instrumental Measures of Music Audiation. If people haven't heard of this, it's basically a way to get an IQ test for a person on their, their musical rhythm and tonal scores. And I took this as a teacher I, a few years ago, and I got like 15th percentile, which made me feel bad. But, but basically what it is, is you hear this set of pitches and it's like, okay, here's one set and then here's another, is the rhythm the same or different? But they're not rhythmic like we would think, like you hear it and you try to go, okay, that goes one, a two, and three, e, a four. Okay, and then what's the next one? Does it go the same? But as you go, it's not that. It's, it really measures a kid's tonal score and their rhythmic score. And then what Crystal does with those two 
is she'll take their aptitude for tonal and rhythm, pair it with what they were good at, and then she can give the parents a recommendation. Your child will be really good at the clarinet and the flute. Your child will be very bad at percussion or, or, or trumpet. Now, she doesn't phrase it that way, right? She says basically what your child would be good at and what they would struggle with. And if your kid is a worker and really will persevere and work hard, they could play one of these other instruments. But if you want them to succeed as easy as possible, here's the instruments that your child would be good at. And, you know, things she puts into that are like, um, so the tonal score, the tonal score actually has to be very high for percussionists because a percussion in the back of the band, we think they don't need a good tonal score. Well, if you're playing a snare drum part by yourself with all other instruments in front of you and nobody's playing your part, you have to have very, very good ears. Mm -hmm. So high tonal scores for percussion, obviously for trombone, um, the, the low, lower tonal scores can go to the reed instruments because at the basic level, you don't need as good of an ear, right? You, if you press the button and do everything correct, the note should come out. Now, the disclaimer is this. Of course, if you want to get good at an instrument, you need a good ear and you, you have to develop that. But at the very beginning, it's less important. You know, and if kids are playing flute and they can get a good sound very quickly, you know, they tend to stick with it more. Um, and that's worked really well. And she also is really into... You know, we're taking 12 flute players. We're taking 400 trombone players. We're taking 600 clarinet players. You know, it's like you kind of limit certain sections. Um, and not to say that there isn't any flexibility with that, but really doing your best to balance your beginning band from the beginning. So you don't have 10,000 flutes, right? We always want more low brass and more clarinets. Um, and if you take all that information in, most parents who don't know anything, they look at this paper and say, oh my gosh, I didn't know that about my child. Maybe I can steer them towards one of these that they would like the best and they would be the best mm -hmm. at. And we find if you do that and then you get them started in a good beginning band program where you give them all the supplements and all the materials and all the teaching that they need, then they have a chance to be successful as they go. It's not, you know, my uncle played this horn, which is actually my story. My uncle played trumpet. I want to play trumpet. Okay. It worked out for me. For how many kids does that not work out? So to know that they'd be good at an instrument, um, is usually pretty helpful for kids. Yeah, and I think also as a teacher, we have to be mindful that if we see a student not progressing well, we shouldn't give up on them. We may have just, they may have gone to the wrong instrument for them, and we may have to adjust to a different instrument for them. I had a group of kids years ago that were okay flute players, nothing special, nothing fantastic, but they said, hey, could I try tuba? And once again, tuba comes up, but this young lady went on to the new school, got her degree at the new school and teaches in the Bronx right now, music. And, uh, as a, and she's a tuba player. And it was just one of those fluke things, switched her to tuba and she just soared. Her, her musicianship just went like crazy. And I have a clarinet player right now who, it, the clarinet just doesn't seem like the best fit for lots of like physical reasons. And it just seems kind of not a great fit. The boy is trying very hard and is very sweet. You know, and I said, how about, would you consider bass clarinet? Sometimes they go, oh, no, I love the clarinet. Okay, fine. You know, that's, you're not going to force it. But they say, oh, I'd be interested in that, you know. And all of a sudden, this boy, I put him on a two reed so that we get a really big, beefy sound. We put enough reed in the mouthpiece, you know. And all of a sudden, this boy is playing this really big, great sound. And, of course, he loves it more because he feels better. Now, Jeff, I don't, this is, as a side note, he struggles, of course, over the break right now on the clarinet. He went over the break on the bass clarinet and went up the scale all the way to high C and played a really nice two ledger line high C on the bass clarinet. I don't know why he was able to do that right away, but that was that was kind of a weird thing. That's not typical. Usually if they struggle over the break and the B flat clarinet, they're going to struggle even more going up. But if it's the bass clarinet I think you're talking about and the mouthpiece that's on it, it probably... It's just one of those things where everything is just matched and all the stars are aligned and it worked out great for the kid. Now, I'll be clear. We haven't gone over the break. He just jumped to D, I think, and then went up the Okay. Stage. We didn't talk all right. about the actual <laughs> break. <laughs> We're not <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Well, still, a high C, you know, that that's a big accomplishment for a bass clarinet player. So now, if we talk about middle school, one thing they need... First a of all, school, the you're... most important job of any band director is pleasing and giving a good middle school program. Because if your middle school is thriving as a high school band director, 
man, that's it right there. Correct. And I think middle school band directors who are fed by elementary school band directors have the have a responsibility to go down to the middle school once a month and just sit in a different section of the elementary school band and play and maybe talk for a minute or two to encourage kids to come up to the middle school. And middle school directors need they need to get their groups noted noticed in the community through public performances, whatever they may be, whether it means playing at a Christmas tree lighting ceremony or a, a Memorial Day ceremony or a Memorial Day parade. And uh, once again, middle school directors have to realize that it's their job to try to push the kids and encourage the kids to go on to high school. But I will put out one thing that elementary, middle school, and high school band directors need to work as a team. And they have to remember that if one of those modules is extremely weak and the Board of Education is trying to decide to fund it, it has a, a, a total effect on all three programs. Because they say, hey, look at the middle school. There's only 15 kids in the middle school. The high school band sounds wonderful. Maybe we can just do away with the middle school and we don't want that. If all three band directors work in collaboration with one another as a team, they're going to further the program throughout the entire community. And once again, you know, I, I think that when we get to middle school, then we're going to be incorporating jazz ensemble. And we need to encourage that. Uh, many non-jazz playing middle school band directors stray away from jazz band as a fear. But there's so many good teaching programs out there to help them through, whether they use the Alfred teaching program for teaching jazz ensemble or, or anyone similar to that so that they can just learn to start jazz. And we'll have an episode the up pretty soon with a lot of that stuff too. We're going to do a deeper dive into rhythm section specifically um, at some point. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. I think, I think that's it. And, you know, I think reassuring kids that yes, it's not easy now. It's going to take a little bit of time. You know, my mother was brilliant. She said, you're going to play a band instrument. Well, we wanted to play a band instrument. I don't think that was an issue. She said, you're allowed to quit after the ninth grade. She said, you're going to play four years. Okay. And, and so we knew that wasn't an option. Like we were going. And she knew that if we played through four years, we'd keep going because she always said it was like riding a bike uphill, right? You get up the hill and all of a sudden you get good enough and you start going downhill and it's way more fun. You know, and I think so many parents and as parents, Jeff, you and I, we've both had to deal with this. Like a lot of parents prepare the road for their children. Right. They try to make everything neat so their children can walk down it rather than saying, nope, you're going to struggle with this. That's OK that you're having a hard time. Let's put it away. We'll try again tomorrow. And so many people say, well, you know, band isn't the most important thing in my life or band isn't. It's just part of it. That's true. But what's the end result of this band program, Jeff? The end result is when your son or daughter is in band and you encourage them to stick with it and see it all the way through the lessons they learn. When, that, when your son or daughter are holding their son or daughter, your grandchild, and they're rocking them in the chair, they are singing them a nice lullaby with a good singing voice. And they're passing that on to the next generation of being, like I go back to Fire Robin, tuneful, beatful, and artful. It's not about making professional band teachers or band musicians. It's about making musical people who can further the art form in future generations. So I think if, if parents would just be encouraged to Give it a couple of years, you know, don't let them quit after a year. Let them just keep going and struggle. You know, a lot of times we can keep some of those kids if they just if they just keep going. And I think that parents need to if they see that their child is struggling at home, communicate to the band director that we're having some struggles here. Here's the problem. What do you think? And then you're going to get the other parent where I used to have some parents say, Oh my God, do they have to come home and play that same song over and over and over again? And I used to say, well, they don't have to, but when you come to the concert, do you want it to sound good or do you want it to sound bad? And Or I'll get a parent who would say to me, well, you know, that, that sounds great at home. And I said, well, maybe your child is playing the parts that they can play and they avoid playing the parts that sound terrible. And I, I do a demonstration to parents, especially as a high school director, saying, this is what you're hearing. And I play the most god-awful thing in the world. And then I said, but if, you, if they practice that for six weeks, this is what it's going to sound like. And I said, that's the process of learning. And I say to them, when you learned a foreign language, could you speak French fluently the first year you took French? No, 
you could say some words, maybe put a few coherent thoughts together, but not have conversational French in one year. It takes time. You've got to build to it. And and I think, go ahead. I will, I will tell, I will say, when you say the word recruitment, I get scared. And I know a lot of band directors are that way because I do not feel like I am a salesperson. There are some people, including a teacher I was with today, um, who could sell a ketchup popsicle to a woman in white gloves. She can get any kid to do it. She is just amazing. You know, I am not that sort of charismatic, convincing person. I have more of a, I have a different personality. I'm more shy. Um, and a lot of band directors, I think, feel the same way. They're like, well, how do I attract kids to my program? To me, I let the kids do the attracting the best I can. And I try to make it so that if it's a really successful program and kids are enjoying themselves and they're really being successful in performances, maybe they're winning some awards, maybe they're taking some trips, then it starts sort of recruiting for itself. And, you know, I just while I'm thinking of it, COVID really forced us all to recruit, I think, a little more than we did before. You know, when you're used to getting the certain number in, you're like, okay, my, my band is maybe 75 or 95 or 105, like whatever your band size is. And you're like, yep, we're really comfortable with what our band size is. You know, we forget there's still other kids we can add in. But then COVID takes, you know, a lot of those kids away. Suddenly anybody walking with two legs, actually anybody with a pulse who you can get into the band room, you now want to have be part of your band. So I think it might be a good reminder for us to continue to recruit these kids the best way we can. Anytime I meet a kid, it's like, nice to see you. What's your name? Great. Hey, did you ever play in band? Would you ever want to? Nope. Okay, no problem. We'll have a great day. Nice to meet you. You know, and just building those positive relationships, start getting more kids in that program. Because I'm bad at recruiting. So those people who are, who are like me, there's other ways to do it rather than being a salesman. Well, I hated recruiting, but I said, if I want my program to exist and move forward, I had to recruit. And what I used to do is that every year I would, at the high school, I would put out a blurb that I'm going to have beginning lessons on such and such instruments. And this one year, I was really short on enough tubas and euphoniums. So I taught group lessons for tubas and euphonium for an entire year. And some of these kids were freshmen, some of them were sophomores, one was a junior. And every single kid stuck with the program and played out till they graduated from high school. Because I just kept saying, look at all these things you get to do, the people you got to be with. And by their association, <coughs> pardon me, with other band members, they learned that they too could get help from their peers to move forward and improve. And I think a lot of high school band directors say, it's not my job to, re to teach beginners anymore. Yes, it is. It's our job to teach any kid who wants to play music anytime to get them in there, even a senior in high school. Uh, you even know, how many times we... even a kid with no band experience who wants to play, and the only band they can get into is your win ensemble. I'm dealing with it right now. Like, how do you get this kid to do something where the only schedule they have is to fit in there, but you want to try to make it work for the kid? You, know? you, you work exactly you work around it you always have to do it and then i think high school band directors have to remember once again it's their job to make sure that they try to encourage the kids to play in high school and after high school um i, I many of my kids who were i had led kids who were music major music minors but i had a lot of kids who would go to their colleges and play in their college contra band jazz band marching band pep band I found I had tons of kids who wanted to play in basketball pep bands yep. and they yep. went to colleges that had NCAA groups that were always on TV and they were playing. And not only did they get to play, they got a stipend for playing and they felt, and then they got free hotel, free transportation, and they had a great time and they met a lot of people they normally wouldn't have met. And uh, it's like the university of Hampshire. I worked with their marching band for six years how many of those kids made friends that they never thought they'd ever have that were majoring in biomedical engineering to um, psychology, to English, to whatever you, you could imagine. And yeah. it's, it's a lifelong learning process that continues on. And, and now I teach a community band well, uh, of older people, and we've all been playing since we were kids. We just love playing. We love being together and making music, just as John would say in his course. Right. So I want to take a quick moment, um, tell you guys about banjo music. And if you haven't seen the instrument repair um, podcast that we did with Joe Betancourt, he's really amazing. 
bandjoemusic.com. That's B-A-N-D-J-O-E music.com. They carry excellent used instruments, which Joe has really put to top-notch playing uh, capacity. It's up to a six-month, there's a six-month limited warranty, and there's great prices, and you can get, you know, these instruments, whether it's one for somebody in your family or a number of them, um, and really get a really great bang for your buck. So I, you know, Joe Betancourt does a great job. Please check out his business. And there's another woodwind business I wanted to promote real quick called Main Saxes. That's M-A-I-N-E saxes.com. And uh, they work on, they work only on saxophones, but they provide expert repairs, sales, and private lessons just north of Portland. Um, they uh, offer a, a wide variety of instruments, modern and vintage, uh, as well as mouthpieces like Aaron Drake and Morgan mouthpieces. Um, so I, I, I hope you guys check them out too. Those are some great local businesses. You know, way better to get a horn from people who are local instrument, local. Just like if you want to get a lawnmower, you want to know somebody who can fix your lawnmower at the same time. Better to get it at a local place than it is a big box store or whatever. Um, same thing. So if you're looking for some instruments, you know, in the New England area, check out banjomusic.com as well as mainsaxes.com. Um, so, so Jeff, we've talked about a lot of recruitment, uh, sort of at all levels. Where, where are we going from here? Well, I think there's, I think one little trick for a high school director is invite the middle school and the elementary school kids and their parents to an evening, a music night. And at that night, have your students in the high school work with the different kids in different ways, playing concert, maybe doing a little marching so they can get an idea of what marching bands like doing a little jazz. But at the same time, the ch parents of those children are with the band parents of the high school and they're having coffee, donuts, tea, what have you, sitting and talking about what it's like to have a kid in high school playing an instrument and how they deal with the kids who are on athletic teams and their schedules and everything and have it here from the parents' point of view rather than the band director's point of view. There's another idea as you're saying that that we've, uh, we've done for a while and it works really well. You know, we have a marching band program, but this would work even if you didn't have a marching band program. When there's a high school football game, when or you know, or when we host a marching band competition, the middle school many times will learn the national anthem. They'll come up and perform it, so they can perform. Sometimes we have them perform with us, so you have like multiple levels bands playing the same national anthem to start the the performance or the football game, and it's just a way for them to get up. Even if they're standing next to a high school kid for four or five minutes, they get to play. The impression that makes is really big. They see that this person, though they're in a different school, is a person just like them with struggles and things. And, and almost all the time, those kids are very nice kids. And it helps promote that. So that's yeah, I, for us, too. That's what we used to do. Same thing. And it, it worked out great. It brought a lot of kids in the program. Now, I'm, I'm going to bring up one, two other points, and that is college band directors. I listen to my colleagues talk about how, well, we don't have enough kids on this instrument or that instrument. And my comment back to the college band directors, what have you done about recruiting? Have you gone out to the high schools and talked to the high schools? Yep. Because all these children have learned over the years that the middle school band directors are going to go talk to the elementary school kids. The high school band directors are going to talk to the middle school kids. And the college band directors that I know that have gone out to high schools and just gone in and said, hello, hi, I'm so-and-so, and, -so, and, um, and sit at a rehearsal and talk. They get a lot of kids to come into their programs. And then and it, recruitment is probably the most important aspect of our job as band directors. But too frequently as band directors, we blame our colleagues or the community for not having a strong program. And I think we have to ask ourselves, are the elementary, middle school, and high school band directors a team that meet regularly to discuss the advancement of the band program and music program in the district? Did you, as the band director, spend all your energies and ideas to increase your program enrollment? And like you said, you're shy and you don't, it makes you uncomfortable to go do that. And other people aren't. But you used your children, your students to help you do that. You helped use your band parents. And is your band program a reflection of you or your students? And for me, we teach to serve, serve our students. We don't teach to serve ourselves. Yep. And I think some band directors get a little too caught up with what they're conducting, what piece they're playing, rather than what have I taught Johnny or Susie? How have I made, their, made them a better player and a better person? What, and I what think, don't my kids know and how can I 
how can I be the change that helps them? Correct. And I think we create an attitude roadblock in our recruitment when we don't think about all these things. We need to reflect on what we can do to make it better. And last point is that like the high school kid is with you for four years, hopefully. They're the, you're probably the only teacher that can talk about that kid to a college about what it's like to have a child for four years and what kind of person they are and how are they as a student. And they rely on you to write the letters of recommendation. And you need to be open as a high school band director to write those. I remember I used to write 50 or 60 a year. And I just said to the kids in January, give me the information early so I can start writing now so I can get them all done. Because I said, I want to help you get into college anywhere you want, anything you want to major in, but you need to give me the information so I have enough time to get the job done. Probably biggest overarching thing for this whole episode is think about K to 12. Think about all of it. And obviously beyond 12, because we're training kids to be parents, to be members of society, to be people who will continue to foster good musicianship and good citizenship. And teamwork amongst everyone in the department. And Jeff, it's been fun. Yes, sir. Talk to you later. Thank you. You bet. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Growing Band Director podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to help spread the word, please give us a five-star review and tell your band director friends to subscribe too. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our YouTube channel, and wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, if you have the time, we highly recommend the After Sectionals podcast for more great listening. Thank you for listening to The Growing Band Director. See you next week.